Now the next step on our Honda project, and we're real happy the way that's coming out of course. Mark was here, he put on some extra decals. These are gonna have to get buried and more clear. These will get sanded and cleared. Same thing with the fender. And the next thing I wanna do here while I have some time, I wanna back mask and get this part ready because while I'm painting the yellow on this, I'll have the yellow on Luciano's tank all at the same time. And I can never be quite sure about the weather tomorrow, but I've got a little time here tonight and I thought I'd get some of this back masking done and maybe even get that tank back masked and get everything prepped up just in case tomorrow is a paintable day. I'll be, I'll be one step ahead here. Now what I did, I kind of decided here to paint the black stripe first. It'll just make for less, see in other words, if I paint the yellow and then put the black on top, the black's going to be twice as high paint wise. So it's a quarter inch stripe. What I'm going to do is lay out the stripe in quarter inch tape. And I'll show how I'm doing this. It's really kind of self-explanatory. This tape is not going to be here at the end of the job. This is used just as a spacer. And since we're trying to replicate this, this paint job pretty accurately, this one I'm going to have to fudge up in the corner here. Because the tape folds back on itself, but it doesn't matter when we put the eighth inch tape here. Now, if you were to get to a severe thing where you were really, really ultimately trying to get this to be if this were on the top of the gas tank, I'd lay out two pieces of eighth inch tape because it would make that bend. But in this case, this will be fine. And this, this um, number plate just goes right off the end, so I wrapped it around a little bit. And actually, if it's not, uh, if it's possible, I'm going to try to get if it's possible. Try to get the black painted tonight so the next time I get to work on this, I'll be all set to go. And you always, always have plenty of tape. Tape, tape, and more tape. Now, I'm going to take some of this. Notice I'm using brand new tape, not the old stuff. There's a, there's a simple reason is when this, when the tape gets old, it gets just not as good, not as bendable, it gets stickier, it gets to be more of a problem. So if you really want to be chip foos, you got to throw some tape away at the end of the job. See, we can find the end of this. Now, when I lay this out, and again, the back masking with tin foil, a la the late Walt Prey, I can go right to the end of this. Now this stripe really won't be a problem. The eighth inch tape will bend. Famous last words. It bends. Wow. Who knew? We got a piece of cut piece of tape there. So I've had a little time again. This is this is late at night. I'm trying to have a uh, set up the day tomorrow, if I can, because we're working around weather issues and babysitting issues and doctor visit issues and my God, there's just no end to it. But this is this is the way, and I can appreciate how easy this is to do this, and it's a good trick, and it's the way I do any of these type of stripes. Now, of course, when you take this piece out, this is the whole key to success here. Take this piece out. We we'll back mask this. This gives us our perfect black stripe. Now, one of the tricks, if you have an area like this to back mask, you need to make a pattern. I want to make sure that tape is down. I can pretty much do this. Lay this piece in here. Just tack it in place. That'll give me one edge. 
And this is another really nice little trick that you can put in the bank for doing back masking. Not many people really look forward to back masking. If you look at that, that picks up the impression of where that tape is. Now we want to have it a little bit less so we can put the tape in there. Cut and tin foil, you almost have to have a brand new razor every time. I don't know why. I guess the aluminum dulls the razor. But how nice and how neat that is for doing a back masking. Again, I can put my, always rub it up on my shirt if possible. I could fill in all the little edges. A lot of people are intimidated, I don't know why, by back masking things. A little bit challenging, but the tin foil really does make it nice and easy. Now the corners, again, I'll just do separate pieces in the corners just to make it easy. Just easier than dealing with a long piece of tape, and I can, when I'm ready to paint, just take this outside, spray it black. If the corner is really tight, of course you can just cut right over the other tape. In this case, I don't think we'll have to. Bend it back. It's a pretty nice way to back mask on. I think that's, tried to show that in as much real time as possible, but that is a good, good way to do it. Well, we're pretty much ready to uh, just airbrush in that little black stripe, and tomorrow all we'll have to do, for well, the next day, is just cover that, pull a back mask off, cover that tape with uh, one piece of tape, and we can paint the yellow. And that black stripe airbrushed in there, that'll dry overnight. And the last thing is, I'm going to try to back mask everything here except what will be painted yellow. Then I can paint the top of this yellow, paint this at the same time, that should be perfect. No, I got this much done, but the problem is it's supposed to either rain or snow tomorrow, so it may not be a painting day. But no matter what, it'll be a babysitting day. But I just feel good about getting that much done. A couple hours of work, and we're that much ahead for tomorrow. Now I got up super, super early this morning. Yeah, you can see we had a little bit of snow. But it looks like it's going to be a good paintable day. And I'm just trying to make sure I got as much of this ready. I'm going to try to get the yellow painted today. Now believe it or not, today we're not even going to have any wind noise to deal with. There's no wind. This is what's nice about getting up nice and early. But I couldn't do this if I didn't get this all prepped the day before. Now I know the yellow is not going to cover in, not going to cover real quick anyway. So we're going to try to put three or four coats on, not try to cover in one coat. That's the whole trick with doing this. If you try to cover in one coat, it's really going to be compromised. All of these colors, the light colors, I like to give it three, at least three coats. Otherwise, it's not going to be the real color yellow. And I'm assuming this is, Luciano's got a pretty close match to what he wants. Which we're going to find out real soon. I'm just trying to get the part wet so I get a good bond, but not so much yellow that I'm going to get either runs or some other issues. Yeah, 
Now this is where most people get frustrated right away. They see the paint isn't covering, it's really thin, and they start putting it, piling it on, and they wind up getting a lot of runs. Well, it just takes the patience. Now that, that's as much as I want to put on here. And the thing is now, is to give it five, 10 minutes in this temperature, maybe 15, let it tack out. While this is tacking out, I'm gonna do the number plates. I'll take the masking tape off the number plates, get that done, I can shoot the yellow on the number plates, the yellow on this, and by the end of this little session, I'll have all the yellow painted, hopefully. Now we know that I just need to pull this tape, cover that black stripe up with tape, and I'm ready to paint these yellow. We'll see how that's gonna play out. Now I've got to remove this piece of blue tape, of course, and then remask it, otherwise I'll have a white stripe around the yellow. So I need to pull that tape. And then basically just back mask this, back mask the black, nice clean edge on that. Now I always like to put the edge that I'm going to use with fresh, and I mean fresh, this package was just opened. The fresh tape bends better, it sticks better, in every way it's better. And it looks like, uh, well, getting this all prepped up last night was a really good thing because we're going to be able to take advantage of getting some painting done. On a day we were expecting snow. We were expecting three inches of snow. But as always, I'll take it. I'll take whatever the gods that send my way. I can bend this around the edge this around the edge because we have that black stripe coming right around the edge make sure I have a nice right there's a little spot I don't like around the edge and we're going to be ready to paint yellow here very soon And that's how we back. That's how we back mask. Actually, the back masking of the number plates. And we took advantage of the fact we already had yellow paint in the gun. And since everybody on this project is contributing something, Mark contributed the sandpaper. Luciano contributed some paint to Vince's project. We're going to use some of your yellow paint, but don't worry. We'll get that tank as yellow as a Easter egg. But as the second coat was drying, I noticed there's a spot on one side that's going to need some attention. And it's where the decals had gone bad and Luciano had done some body work. I think we're going to have to re-body work that somehow. Again, we'll look at it once the paint dries. And if we have to re-yellow it, luckily we have a whole pint of yellow. We're ready. Boy, it's turning out to be a nice day. My poor grandson, who was sick for about a week, is finally good enough that we're going to see him today. So the idea is to get all this paint on before the paint be drying. Now you can pretty much see the difference. I think you can see it really quickly. When you go over white with yellow, or you go over black, you need 10 coats. I'm glad Luciano bought a whole pint of this paint, not a half pint. Going over to black, wow, it takes a lot of paint. On the white, maybe I should have painted the thing white, but then the paint starts building up thickness and everything. You really can't win.
I will. You want to be on a YouTube video? Come over here with your bikini on. <laughs> Oh, it's my crazy next door neighbor, Julie. She's a Playboy bunny, I think. I don't know what she is. It's just a bunny. Not sure. We'll have her on video before the year's out. We'll get her. She, she suns in her bikini, right? Right next door to me. Now, you can pretty much see that even after three coats, I can still see the Suzuki lettering. It's still, it's, it's probably gonna need four or five coats to get the real color. The number plates, well, they came out pretty, a way, almost a different color yellow. But especially where the decals are going, I wanna try to get this a little extra paint in case we have to color sand this a few times. I'm sure we will. It's a beautiful color, but this is, this is one of the more difficult colors to paint. Believe me, I know. Not fun. Yellows and reds. They are not your friend. If everybody had a black motorcycle, we'd never have any problems. It's funny how some colors are, and candy apples are the worst, where you're going through a color into a base. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like glad they went out of style. Anyway, we did get all the paint on. This day is, uh, well, the baby's going to be here soon, but the day is going to end on a real positive note. Between last night and today, we got some paint painted. Now I see we're going to need some work where this decal is in this body work. It's not, I think it's going to be easier to color sand that out and repaint the yellow, so I won't pull a back mask anymore. And we do have a whole pint of this, so I think we're going to be, we'll be fine. But you can still see it. Yeah, I can still see it. Now, maybe some people can't, but right here, you can see the decals coming through. This is going to be the fourth coat, and we're still not covered. I'll, I'll put five, I'll put six on. I don't, I'll use the whole can of paint up. I don't care. Anyway, we're going to just keep painting it until it turns yellow. Got a number of plates after three coats. Perfect. Couldn't be better. The tank, still not really as good as I want it. I'm going to give it one more coat, I'm afraid, and then I'm going to color sand it. I think the plan is going to be to just color sand it and then put some more paint on it tomorrow. But the number plates, wow. Well, again, these had no body work where the repair is, so that's always to our advantage, too. Now, in the course of this, I got five full coats of yellow on this, and I can still see the decals. And I can still see the, uh, oh boy, I'm disappointed in how this paint covers. And it's expensive paint. And you know, you know what's funny? The cheap paint always covers better. <laughs> I'm not sure why. It's like a world in reverse. But anyway, these are all drying up. They're going to be ready for color sanding soon. But the tank has on the, oh, it's on the other side. It has some, uh, where the body work was, it isn't really perfect. And where these decals are, I'm going to have to do a lot of color sanding. But we'll get it done, I'm sure. And the baby is on his way. Now, I want to make a special thanks to our good friends, Art and Mona, who donated this whole box of hot, of course, we have our own drawer of Hot Wheels. Let's build a big racetrack so Luciano and Glenn can go race in their Ducatis. Come on, yeah, let's, let's build it. Let's build it. What else you got in here? I see Volcano Mountain is in here. Yeah. What else you got in here? Go what? Well, come on, climb up. Let's build the volcanoes. Wow, look, you got a special booster. The big high-speed booster. What's Ooh, that? I wonder what this is. Wow, oh, it's Luciano's Ducati. That's Luciano's motorcycle. Oh, we're gonna race him too. So this is what's funny. The reason I said we're gonna we're gonna obviously play the rest of the day, but this is what we have to convert our shop over. Look at this shop. That's well, believe me, this is the last winter this will ever happen. Oh yeah. Karen and I have agreed. We from this point on, it's going to be one bike at a time, only because I don't want to move so much stuff. <laughs> 